This Will It Feed guide is not only useful to see which mags you might want for the upcoming 47 SPR, but also to see if the 47 is a good fit with your already existing mags if you already run an AK. It's important to remember that we aren't rating the magazines themselves, but rather how well they fit into this gun. Just because it doesn't fit the 47 that well doesn't mean it's a bad magazine. This time around, we've devised a simple scoring system so it's a little easier to compare each mag. For the impatient among you, you can just fast forward to the end where you can see the full scoring chart in all its glory. Scoring is based out of five, three being about average, and five being pretty much the best you can expect. The insert category is how well the mag lip catches, how smoothly it pivots, and how well it locks into place. The jam score represents if you jam in the mag at an extreme angle, how well the mag corrects itself and locks into place. This can be pretty important in the heat of a game. FB, or front to back, is how much play the magazine has forward to back. SS, or side to side, is how much side to side play there is. Pretty straightforward. Release is how smoothly and consistently the magazine releases from the gun. Finally, feed represents how well the magazine feeds. I suspect most mags will get a five year, but we will see. Finally, we'll tally up all those scores for a total score out of 30. Hopefully by the end of all this, we'll have a podium finish with the top three magazines for the 47 SPR. We begin with Crytac's own included metal high cap. The mag lip is pretty shallow and it doesn't catch in that well at all. When you pivot the mag, it's pretty smooth, but the mag catch isn't perfect. It gets a 3 out of 5. When you jam in the mag at an angle, it corrected itself and locked in every single time. Like I was saying in the review, I do think Crytac designed this on purpose. It scores a 5 out of 5. Front to back play is pretty bad, but still not the worst we've seen and it gets a 3. Side to side is about the same amount of movement, so it scores 3 for that as well. The release is smooth and the magazine pops out every single time. It scores a 5 out of 5. I would hope that the stock mag feeds, and it does, scoring another 5 out of 5. This brings the grand total to 24 points. LCT mags are next, starting with the metal mid cap. These are pretty nice because they're actually constructed of steel. Like the stock Crytac mag, the lip barely catches at all. In fact, this one is slightly worse. When you lock it in, it's a very mushy click, and it's actually hard to tell that it's actually seated in. It's not that satisfying at all, and gets two points. Jamming it in at an angle, however, it always finds that proper position. It gets five points for that. Front to back play is almost exactly the same as the stock mag, and gets a three. Side to side is a little bit better than the stock mag, and gets a four. Contrary to the insert, the release is super smooth and it works every single time. It gets a 5. As for feeding, it shot flawlessly in semi as well as auto, earning it a 5, bringing the grand total to 24, tying it with the stock mag. Now let's try out the polymer LCT midcap. The mag lip does not catch whatsoever. Pivoting the mag isn't smooth at all, probably due to that ribbing. The lock isn't really that consistent at all, and half the time it wouldn't even lock. When it does lock, it's super mushy. It gets one point. Jamming it in seemed to be the only way to insert the mag, and even that wasn't that consistent. It gets a three. Front to back play is pretty bad, and gets a two for that. The ribbing improves the side to side play, and it earns a four. When you release the mag, half the time it would get caught and wouldn't actually release. It's not smooth even at the best of times and earns it a 1. When it actually does fit, it feeds flawlessly, so that's a 5 for feeding, bringing the grand total to 16 points. The SEALS flash mag is next. Basically, it's a high cap mag with a pull tab instead of a winding wheel. The lip locks in the best so far, and when you pivot it back, it seats every single time. It's still a tad mushy, and it earns a 4. Jamming it in at an angle, it always finds its correct position, and locks in, earning a 5. Forward to back play is pretty bad, and it gets a 2. Side to side is a little bit better than the stock mag, so it gets a 4. The release is perfect with a nice smooth action, and earns a 5. Time to give it a pull and test feeding. No issues in semi or auto, earning it another 5, bringing the grand total to 25. If you're looking for a flash mag, this is a pretty good bet. 
the G&G RK74 polymer mid-cap is next. The lip is too short and there is not a chance of it clipping in. Pivoting the mag where I think the lip should be, it locks into place but it's super vague, earning it a 1. Jamming it in seems like the way to go with this mag and that works every time, but still feels pretty rough, earning it a 4. Hello Wobble! This is pretty horrendous and warrants a solid 1. Side to side isn't any better, and you can rotate the entire mag in a circle. Yikes! This mag is definitely not for this gun, it gets another 1. The release is finally a chance to redeem itself, and the mag comes out super smooth with no effort, and it gets a 5. Perhaps because of the loose fitment, we were getting some super low FPS shots, but it seemed to go away as the BBs ran out. I didn't load too many BBs, so I don't think it was too tight. It gets a 3 for feeding, which is a first, bringing the grand total to 15. Next up is the JG Waffle Style Midcap. The ribbing is a little bit too thick and as hard as I tried, refused to fit in the gun. This makes it the first DNF or did not fit. Naturally, I can't really test for feeding either. The JG Shorty High Cap is next. It locks in okay, but when you pivot the mag back, it seems to slip out, causing it not to fit. Even when you do get it perfect, you still have to apply upwards pressure to lock it in properly, and the click is still pretty mushy. It gets a 1. Jamming it in seems like the only way to insert the mag semi-consistently, and even that didn't work out too well, and it gets a 3. However, once it's finally in there, the front to back play is the best we've seen so far, and earns a 5. Likewise, the side to side play is nearly perfect and gets another 5. The release is decent, but has a little bit of roughness to it and takes quite a bit of force to eject, earning it a 3. Feeding wise, I encountered no problems and it earns a 5, bringing the grand total to 22 points. Moving on to our rather long list of SEMA mags, we have the C71 Standard Metal Midcap. The front lip locks in pretty well, definitely one of the better ones so far. Pivoting the mag back is smooth and the latch clips in securely every time, a well-deserved 5. Jamming in the mag works every time as well, earning it another 5. Play is where this mag falls a little flat and front to back play is worse than the stock Crytac mag, scoring a 2. Side to side is not really much better, scoring another 2. Release is smooth and consistent with minimal effort and it earns a 5 for that. Feed test is similar to the GNG RK74 magazine with some low FPS shots before settling it in and feeding fine. Again, I didn't overfill the mag so it gets a 3 for feeding, bringing the grand total to 22. The next SEMA is the C96 metal straight style midcap. The front lip doesn't catch quite as well as the last mag, but pivoting back is super smooth and locks in consistently, earning a 5. Jamming it in is also consistent and earns another 5. Front to back has about the same amount of play as the C71, scoring another 2. Side to side is an improvement and it's about the same as the stock mag, earning it a 3. Release is excellent and light and it gets a 5 for that. The feed test showed no issues in semi or auto, giving it another 5, bringing the grand total to 25 points. Next, we have the C72 AK74 style midcap, which is the exact same shell as the C25 high cap. The front lip doesn't catch too well, but when you pivot the mag back, it does seat into place. It's a little mushy, so it earns a 4. When you jam it in, it clicks every time no matter how quick, so it deserves a 5. Front to back play is bad, but still not as bad as the G&G, so it earns a 2. Side to side is a little bit better, and I'd give it a 3. Release is smooth and consistent as any, and deserves a 5. Feeding performs flawlessly, so it gets another 5 bringing the grand total to 24 points. Next up, we have the C42 Waffle Style Midcap. Just like the JG Waffle Midcap, the ribbing does completely prevent it from fitting in the gun. If you want to run a Waffle Style Midcap, prepare to do some filing. This makes it the second DNF on our list. On the home stretch now, we have the C105 Bulgarian Style Midcap. The pronounced front lip means it catches a little better than any other mag so far. Pivoting back is smooth and the mag catch engages with a nice click, a well-earned 5.
Jamming it in works consistently as well, earning it another 5. Front to back play isn't perfect, but it's still one of the better ones, earning it a 4. Side to side is easily one of the best, probably because of that ribbing that's a perfect height and it gets a 5. Release is pretty good, but there is a little bit of roughness to it and it earns a 4. Speeding test showed no issues in semi or auto, so it gets another 5, bringing the grand total to 28 points. Finally, our last meg of the day is the C91 RPK style midcap. It's a very similar body to the AK74 midcap, and the front lip doesn't like to lock in either. Pivoting the mag back, it requires a bit of force, and I think the back lip is a little bit too long. It's really inconsistent and vague, and gets a 1. Jamming it in seems like the only way to go, but it still wasn't that consistent, earning it a 3. Front to back play is pretty bad, and I give it about a 2. Side to side is quite a bit better, and it gets a 4 for that. When you release the mag, it gets jammed sometimes because of the longer back lip and requires a bit of force, earning it a 3. The feed test went flawlessly when the mag did want to be seated, earning it a 5, putting the grand total to 18. Alright, 13 magazines later, and we have a winner! Leading the pack is the C105 Bulgarian midcap at 28 points. Tied at 25 points, we have the SEAL flash mag as well as the C96 straight midcap. Honorable mention definitely belongs to the JG shorty mag, which although it didn't fit in too well, is the only magazine to score 5 out of 5 for both the front to back and side to side play. I hope you guys found this useful and I hope the scoring system makes it a little easier to compare each of these mags. Remember, a low score doesn't mean it's a bad mag, just that it doesn't fit too well with this gun. As always, thanks for watching, subscribe for regular updates, and we'll catch you on the next one.